shout out to you all for being here today. Um, I'm Victoria Sanchez, and I'm the Diversity Community Program Manager at Riot. I use she, her pronouns. Joining me today are some incredible Riot staff members who I would like them to introduce themselves to you. Uh, Sam and Matt, can you tell us your name, your pronouns, your title, and how long you've been working at Riot? For sure. Thank you so much for the intro, Victoria. Hello, everyone. My name is Sam Garcia. My pronouns are she, her, hers. I've been working at Riot for about a year and a half now, and I am an associate university recruiter on the university programs team. And kick it over to Matt. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Matt Kraus. Uh, I'm a senior program manager on the university programs team. Uh, I have been at Riot for about six and a half years. And I'm very excited to explore Riot and share what our share more about our awesome program with y'all. Yeah, so like Matt mentioned, really the goal of this workshop is to guide you through Riot's internship program. Um, but before we get started, we wanted to tell you a little bit more about Riot Games, and we have designed a fun activity. Um, because you've heard me introduce Riot a couple of times now for those that you have, who of you who've been on uh, for the workshops, um, but we decided to start with some fun trivia. So Sam, if you could uh, go to the next slide. In 2021, how many monthly players stepped into the world of Runeterra? So drop it in the chats. How many monthly players do you think stepped into the world of Runeterra? We have 180 million. Okay. 180, 180, 200 mil. One hundred and ninety mil. Feels a bit like cheating. <laughs> Anyone else? Okay, Sam, one ninety one. It's a hundred and eighty million monthly players. Good job. A lot of you were right on the money with that one. Okay. Next question, what do these music artists have in common? Drop it in the chat. All in Arcane, Worlds, they all perform for League of Legends. Worlds, Worlds, I love them all, someone says. They're League songs, the League of Legends showcase. These are some great answers. Anyone else? They've all done SOG for League of Legends games. Awesome. Sam, do you want to take it to the next slide? Yes, a lot of you guessed correctly. They are all League of Legends World Finals performers. And Sam, can you take us to the next slide? Awesome. So as you know, our first game that we ever released was League of Legends, but ever since then, we've really expanded our portfolio into so many other games and experiences, right? So here we have Teamfight Tactics, The Legends of Runeterra, and Valorant, right? We even expanded our reach into entertainment with our Emmy Award-winning series, Arcane. How many of you have watched Arcane? Drop in the chat. Maybe drop your favorite Riot games in the chat. Oh, we have a lot of me's. Yes, love Arcane. Excellent. Ooh, someone asked for season two. Oh, that was you, Matt. <laughs> awesome. Hype for Project L, yes. Valorant, we have a lot of Valorants on here. And yes, season two is coming soon. Awesome, Project L. Excellent. Okay. Sam, can you take us to the next slide? Yes. Riot's headquarters is in LA. So a lot of us, me, Sam, Matt, we're all based in our LAX office, but we have so many different offices globally. We have over 4,000 rioters and over 20 plus global offices. Um, this past year, we've been certified as a great place to work. Um, we actually have a virtual tour of our LAX office that we'd like to share with you. And we will share that with you um, towards the end of the presentation so you can have a chance to explore it. 
how many of you were a part of clubs or organizations at your school? So a lot of you, I see some hand raids. Awesome. Yeah. So here at Riot, we have something very similar. We call them our Riot Inclusion Groups for short. And these are really supportive communities, really based on shared goals um, that help members of the group create a sense of belonging. So here at Riot, we have, these are common uh, Riot Inclusion Groups, right? Um, and feel free to ask us any questions about these as well. Uh, but without further ado, I'm so excited to now pass the mic over to Matt, who is going to talk to you a little bit more deeply about Riot Summer Internship Program, including like who is eligible and what you can hope to expect during this experience and this whole process. So Matt, I'll go ahead and pass the mic to you now. Thank you, Victoria. Hello, community. How are you? Excited to be here. All right. Well, I'm excited to share this picture. Uh, first and foremost with you all, uh, this one is near and dear to my heart. This was actually taken this summer. Um, we actually were able to host all of our 125 interns on campus, uh, something that we have not been able to do uh, for several years because of COVID, uh, but we were able to break that streak this year and invite our amazing class to see and live the Riot experience in person. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about kind of what LA Intern Week is in just a bit, but I wanted you to have this picture because it's it's awesome to see all of our amazing faces. And if you could picture yourself as one of them, you might have the opportunity to join us for an upcoming summer. So what actually makes the Riot program special? Well, uh, we've actually grown leaps and bounds over the years. Uh, I joined the team, the university programs team, back in 2019. Uh, at that time, we had a really small internship program. Uh, it was really just catered to engineers and artists. Uh, since 2019, we went from 39 interns to this past summer where we had 125. And I think the biggest change, other than just the number, was how many roles and disciplines that we now support. So instead of just being kind of our traditional engineers and our artists, we now support designers, production folks, um, narrative folks, uh, audio, um, pretty much you name it, and there's probably a position for you now at Riot. Um, we were so proud, actually, this year, we actually received the Campus Forward Award for one of the best internship programs for a mid-sized company in North America. So what does that actually entail? I'd like to kind of break that down for you on the next slide. So this is a bit of our program, kind of some big bullets, uh, and I want to talk about those right now. So of course, it is paid. We offer competitive full-time roles or full-time internship roles for all of our positions. While we're not going to be in person this coming summer, we are providing a housing stipend to help our students kind of make sure their home office is ready and good to go. Uh, if we were going to be in person, we would actually provide you uh, corporate housing. So we would relocate you from wherever you are in the world to Los Angeles and then put you up in a corporate apartment that you would share with some other interns. But once you're here, whether you're virtual or in person, that's where the fun begins. Uh, the very first thing that our interns get to go through is a special two-day onboarding course called Orientation. So if you're familiar with our league IP, Oriana is one of our mages, and she actually takes us through a special, like I said, intern-specific onboarding course where you get to learn and explore Riot's values, play games with other interns and your peers, and get to meet really awesome kind of prominent Rioters and learn about Riot's missions and how you're going to help get us there while you're here this summer. And once you're out of orientation and in with your teams, there's gonna be events pretty much every single week for our interns to participate in. Um, some of those awesome events are lunch and learns. Uh, this past year, we had Anna Donlin and Tom Cannon, both executive producers for their respective products, Project L and Valorant, come and spend a solid hour with interns 
talking about uh, the different uh, decisions that they've made leading up to their products launch, things they're working on now, and then opening it up to Q&A, which is some pretty awesome FaceTime with leaders at the company. Besides lunch and learns, you're also going to get the chance to take some really cool learning and development courses led by the university programs team. So we walk you through a two-part course to help you really explore what it is that you value in your early career. We try to make this course Riot agnostic. That way you're able to kind of assess your own journey at Riot. And by the end, feel strongly whether or not Riot is you know, a place you want to call home to start your career. And it'll help you with some really strong talking points when you're talking to your manager about conversions and offers. Of course, there's more than just learning. You get to have a lot of fun too. Uh, so we have Friday game times every Friday for interns to get together and play. And usually our interns are using those game times to prep for Riot Rumble. So if you're unfamiliar with Riot Rumble, maybe you've heard of Clash. So Clash is something that was actually born out of Riot Rumble. Riot Rumble is an internal company competition where rioters compete against one another for a coveted, basically like varsity jacket uh, and the chance to play on the NALCS stage. Um, it is the most fiercest competition and it's the best way to enjoy League of Legends playing on a dedicated team, scouting your opponents. Uh, and I mentioned Clash because rioters actually found this um, you know, tournament mode to be so enjoyable and truly the best way to experience League. We wanted to bring it to our players. I know we had a bit of a rocky launch, but we are very happy that it's in a good place now. Um, lastly, there's some really awesome rioter perks. So if you've ever wanted to have that riot in your in-game name as an intern, you would have the opportunity to do so. And you might get a lot of RP. So just know that there are a lot of fun things coming if you are able to intern with us. So what are you gonna do if you're a riot intern? Well, uh, you'll be joining us for 12 weeks. That is our kind of traditional summer length, three months. Um, Riot interns have worked on a variety of projects. So you'll see some things listed here. Some, I couldn't even begin to tell you. Um, if you're a fan of TFT, we had an intern who was set to join the League of Legends team. Um, and right as she joined, her team had recently just pitched TFT. Um, if you don't know, TFT was made in just a matter of a couple months internally. And our intern, Allison Chow, was one of our leads, or, or one of our engineers that really led and helped ship TFT. So imagine, she had no idea what she was going to work on. And at the end of the summer, she got to add TFT to her resume that she helped ship that game. Um, we've had other interns work on our Valorant skin lines. Uh, so if you place gold or above, you know, or victorious, the victorious skin lines, uh, you will actually get that free skin. Uh, we've had interns work on a variety of different game modes. So if you're a fan of the different dragons um, that have come to the Rift, or if you've seen some of the potential upcoming ARAM changes, one of our most recent game design interns actually worked on that this year. And I know some of you are pretty hot on some of the R&D projects we have. As an intern, there are even opportunities for you to join and work on R&D teams as well. So who is eligible for our internship program? Well, hopefully all of you. Uh, if you are in school, uh, you are eligible. We even allow graduating seniors who are graduating you know, this coming spring to apply for our summer internship program. Um, you just have to be enrolled in some form of education, whether it's uh, your university, college, or if you are kind of continuing, let's say you just graduated uh, and you are continuing to master your craft and you're in like a specific, you know, special uh, certificate or non-degree program, that's okay too. As long as you are pursuing your craft, we want you to apply. And I think one of the biggest questions that we get, if we go to the next slide, yeah. Do I have to be good at games to work at Riot? Let me be the shiny example. No, uh, uh, I would say 99% of our roles, you do not have to be good at the game. 
Uh, if you're working on you know, one of our balancing teams or one of our competitive teams for one of our products, that is where we're going to probably take a look to see your skill level in the games. But otherwise, no, we just want you to have a passion for a riot and our players. So applications are open. Uh, at the moment, our applications that we have available, pretty much anything and kind of the creative field. So if you're an artist uh, or if you're into audio production, if you're into UX, uh, sound design, VFX, or if you are a graduate student and you're looking for an MBA role uh, through data science or research, please check out our site. We do have an upcoming deadline of January 6. Uh, and I will say, especially for my art students and my creative students, do not rush your application. Take your time. Our team will not start going through the applications until the deadline, and we want to see your best work. So I recommend using the upcoming holiday break to really put the best finishing touches on your portfolio. And I wish all of you the best of luck. Good luck, have fun on your applications. Now I would love to introduce my amazing colleague and teammate, Samantha Garcia, to help you learn how to be successful in your application process. Thank you, Matt. Thank you so much for giving us that great snapshot into where our program has been, what it has been this next summer, as well as what we have in store and are planning for next summer as well. Um, so let's talk a little bit about intern applications. I know that a lot of you have been throughout the series with community, these fireside chats. So we're going to pull them all together. These are probably things that you talked about in the past, heard about in the past, and we're going to talk about things that you can line up to make applications either for you know summer 2023 or summers in the future really strong and how to make yourself stand out in the application process. So first, let's talk about what are Riot University recruiters like myself, like Matt, and intern hiring managers even looking for? And so while we all understand everyone here are looking to apply for these internship opportunities are students. Basically, at its foundational level, we're looking for folks that have an expertise in their craft, whatever it may be, folks that have experience in collaborating with other groups, with communicating with other folks, and then touching upon what Matt had just talked about, an interest in video games or the player experience. Some folks are people that have been playing League, Riot's games for many, many years. Some people are more recent or some people enjoy playing different kinds of games, whether that's board games or Dungeons and Dragons or just watching esports. There are a wide variety of ways to understand and appreciate the player experience. So those are kind of the three beats that we look for in an application when submitted to Riot for the internship program. And specifically, if we're talking about the Riot internship application, there are two major parts that are included in all internship applications. So those two parts that are across all roles, one is we will ask you to submit a resume. So a resume we're asking very similar to some of the workshops and conversations we've had in the Spire site chat um, series this year. We're talking about relevant work experience, projects, extracurricular activities, and relevant coursework that you may have completed. Maybe you are a game design major. Maybe you are in some kind of game development club. Maybe you've helped organize a hackathon or some kind of game jam for your school. Or maybe you've been working with your friends just on a project on the side that exemplifies your craft. All of those things are relevant things, and we want to hear about it in your resume. And then there are two application questions. These questions are in lieu of any kind of cover letter. And so all of these questions are the same across all of our roles. So the first one being who or what inspired you to pursue your particular craft or major? And then of course, why are you interested in working at Riot Games? We've talked a little bit before in our networking chat, our resume chat, why is it video games? Why are you not interested maybe in pursuing internship opportunities in other fields and other companies, other video game um, studios? Why is it Riot specifically? Why is it games that calls to you and why you wanna dedicate your craft and skills to that endeavor? And then for some specific roles, there's an additional component to it as well where they may require or ask for a portfolio or some kind of take home test. So for the art roles that Matt had mentioned earlier, all of our art roles, there is an expectation there 
there is some sort of portfolio that is included with your application. Usually that's a link to something like an art station or a personal website where you display your work. Um, and then there are other roles, things like software engineering, sound design that have some kind of take home element where you'll be asked to complete a quick take home assessment just to test for foundational skills um, needed for that particular intern role. To talk a little bit about portfolios, reels, personal websites a little bit more, again, they're expected for all of our creative and art roles and can also help folks stand out for roles such as game design. And so when you are developing your portfolio, your personal website, making sure that it's easily accessible, so something online that can be easily viewed, um, to Matt's point that he brought up earlier, displaying your best work. Show us the best stuff you got. So show us your best work, show us your ideation process, how you brainstormed, how you got to your final product, and then bonus points as well. If you can also include work that is in a similar style to the product potentially that you are interested in applying for. So our games have different styles amongst themselves. The style of League is different than the style of Valorant. And those are also ways to help your portfolio or your personal website stand out among the other intern applications that we receive. So again, final checklist for an intern application. We want to make sure that all of the required materials are included in the application. So we're talking about that resume. We're talking about that portfolio link um, if it's required for the role that you are applying for. Um, also making sure that those documents are easily readable and downloadable. So talking about PDFs um, are usually the best practice, the best course for applying the, or excuse me, submitting those documents. And then again, when you are submitting a link for your website or portfolio, make sure that it's active, that it isn't a dead link or it doesn't lead to a 404 error. error. Make sure that the website and portfolio is up to date and then make sure that your resume or the application includes any passwords that might be included um, for your art station, for your portfolio, so it is easy for a recruiter to be able to view your work. So to follow up again about dates and deadlines. And so the roles that we have available for summer 2023, our open roles are posted on the Wright University Programs website. And I'm gonna link a bunch of links at the end of this presentation to a bunch of places, including the UP website. And that deadline is Friday, January 6th at 12 noon. And so if you have a little bit of extra time over winter break to polish up your portfolios, to polish up your application, that is when the deadlines are due for next summer. But if you are interested in applying for different kinds of roles, things like game design, software engineering, or are interested in applying for the summer 24 24 internship or internship summers beyond that, I would highly, highly recommend putting some kind of calendar reminder right now in your phone, in your calendar to check the right university programs website on September 1st. And so being able to look as soon as possible about the roles when they get posted, generally speaking, many of our popular roles, we review one and rolling basis, meaning that we review applications, interview and fill roles as we receive applications. And so while for those creative roles, Matt had talked about earlier, please pay, take your time in reviewing and preparing your portfolios for the majority of our other roles, being able to apply right when those applications open is one of the strongest pieces of advice that I can give you all. So again, September 1st, being able to stay tuned to the university programs website. If you don't already follow um, Riot Games on LinkedIn, we also have content usually throughout the month of August leading up to September 1st or hashtag Riot Games posting day because we post all of our Riot internship roles on that day. So you can see other content and reminders leading up to that September 1st date. So that was just a bite size of best tips and tricks about the intern application process. There is also is a wonderful resource that myself and Christian and the rest of our UP team created that are called the Riot Games Internship Study Guides. And so these are 
blog articles that are a little bit lengthier, but include all of the answers that we believe answer the most frequently asked questions about the internship process, the interview process, how decisions are made, and how people can prepare their internship applications and for the intern interview process. So I'll also drop a link to those articles at the end of this presentation as well, but is also a wonderful resource if you would like to read a little bit more from the perspective of some different folks from some different interns about tips and advice that they would give when applying for the internship program as well. So with that being said, we are going to do a little bit of a breakout room activity. So we're pulling in all of the skills and things that we have learned throughout this fire side chat um, series of workshops. So what we're going to do is you're going to break you out into breakout rooms for about 10 minutes and we'd like you all to discuss your best internship, employment, job, or work experience that you've had and sharing with each other what made that experience a great experience. That Reflection can hone a little bit, perhaps for yourself, what you're looking for in an internship or a professional career opportunity. But more importantly, that's something that you could also use in something like an intern application of being able to describe why you're interested in applying, for example, the right internship program. So with that being said, Victoria, let's split these folks off into their breakout rooms. You'll have about 10 minutes and then we'll come back to the group and we'll ask for one or two people maybe to share on what they talked about. Awesome, everyone has been sent. I think this is the crew. All right. So we hope that you were able to meet some folks that maybe you haven't talked to before or didn't know previous to this workshop. Um, is there maybe one, maybe two people that are brave souls in this, you know, the safe space to chat a little bit about what you talked about with the group? So talking about your best internship work experience, Joseph, thank you. All right, Joseph, what did you talk about in your group discussion? Oh, yeah. So, uh, uh, so we didn't have uh, a lot of time, but uh, it was me, Evan, and James. We met met together, and we were kind of uh, introducing ourselves. Kind of, we all kind of had different uh, uh, different backgrounds, but kind of really kind of talked about uh, thinking of different per perspectives when uh, when pursuing game design. Um, in terms of working, uh, we, we kind of work. We kind of. We kind of talk more about like kind of the, the realistic struggles of working in, a, in a, um during in a collaborative group where um losing motiv motivation was kind of definitely one um we didn't but i mean we didn't quite sure i, I mean we didn't quite share our experiences in our internships because we were just kind of we were just kind of busy sharing our work experiences uh of ourselves individually but that's that's pretty much about it in our, in our room Yes, I know that 10 minutes isn't a whole lot of time to talk with a bunch of folks, but I'm glad that you were able to maybe talk about some some similar themes or similar experiences. Yes, collaboration can definitely be a honed skill set, and obviously it's something where collaborating in person has one skill set. Some of it is transferable or some of it is completely different. Collaborating online and being able to manage that environment, different tools, um, and that's something that is common throughout every craft, every opportunity, there are very few roles out there that are just kind of individuals in a, in a vacuum working together. So glad that you all were able to, to chat about your experiences. Thank you, Joseph. And then do we have to, is it Christ? Is that how you pronounce your name? Chris. Chris, okay, Chris. Yeah. Excellent. Chris, what did you talk about in your group? Yeah, me and my group, we all kind of had like non-gaming related internship experience. And we just kind of talked about how important it was in a group team setting to also be able to play as a team player and not just always like jump for like the leadership position and how like we all found like really unique like value in everything that we did. That's I also awesome. had a, a quick question. Um, we all talked about like bias in the team and we kind of started discussion on how bias is dealt with at Riot, especially when you're dealing with a game that most people who work at the community are so passionate about. Like, how do you deal with your internal biases? 
That's a good question. May I ask um, for some additional clarification about what kind of bias, perhaps? Or right. So we were that? Yeah, we were going into detail about like the champion balancing team, or when you're super passionate about a project that might not be like backed up by data, um, or just you know player feedback, things like that. Okay, I understand. Um, and then Victoria would love to hear your thoughts as well. I'll go ahead and kind of take a first stab. So it's something where we've talked about it in a couple of other of our workshops where Riot is an incredibly values driven company. So those values are very much in balance with each other. There's of course being able to focus on the player experience, be, being able to do your jobs really well, execute with excellence, you know, dare to dream, think of really ambitious goals, but then also being able to balance the resources, the timing, the expectations of a team or a company that you may be working for, you know, whether that's at Riot or somebody somewhere else. And so there is, again, lots of collaboration that happens to make sure that there isn't necessarily one actor, one individual, one team that drives all of the decisions for a particular product or, or, or processes. Um, it's People are given the autonomy, of course, to be able to develop their ideas, to be able to pitch them in a comfortable space, to be able to speak passionately about why they think something is best for, you know, players, will better serve them, will be able to deliver that, you know, tier one player experience that we're looking for, but also being able to readjust, have those conversations in case that those energies need to be changed or need to be redirected in some other form. And so there it's an ever morphing process and that's probably a skill set that folks are looking to develop all the time myself included as an individual where maybe passionate about a particular thing that i'd be maybe working on but by talking to teammates like matt collaborators like victoria being able to broaden my own understanding of what the impact of something like that may look like um I, of course, don't work on a game team specifically. There are probably some other folks that can give a little bit more context in that specifically. But um, Victoria, do you have anything to add? All right, awesome. All right, so we do want to allocate some additional time towards that. I see that we have a couple of more hands. I think that we're going to open ourselves up for Q&A. We know that this group is always very curious, has lots of questions and answers, so we want to be able to honor and hold the time that we have for Q&A. Um, Justice, do we want to go ahead? Actually, here, let me show this really quickly. Before we jump into Q&A, just wanted to shout out a couple of additional resources that I'm going to drop in the chat. So this is a variety of links that I would like you to, you know, open to bookmark in your computer. So of course the university programs website, that study guide that I was referring to earlier about additional tips and tricks about applying to the right internship program, talking about LinkedIn, talking about additional resources to learn about different kinds of roles at Riot. And of course, for some folks that may be recent grads or folks that are looking for full-time roles, being able to link you up with that right games career site as well so i'll go ahead and drop this information in the chat um and then of course here are some qr codes for myself and victoria if you'd like to connect with us on linkedin i'll speak for myself that is always very helpful when i receive linkedin connection requests that have some kind of note with context as to why someone is reaching out or would like to connect on a platform like linkedin and so i have seen some from some folks um even in this room where it's a note of saying hey thank you so much for the presentation in the community fireside chat, it just gives me a little bit more context of why you're looking to reach out, because I will admit, I do receive a large volume of LinkedIn requests from a lot of um, other folks. So it just helps me contextualize on why you are looking to connect and what you'd like to talk about. But yes, I will drop those links and then Justice, I will hand this off to you. Awesome. Thanks so much, Sam. Thank you, Victoria. Uh, I am going to go ahead and hop right in because I know our students are eager and so are we. So uh, first, what would you recommend to anyone that has either already gotten a Riot internship in the past and is reapplying for next year or did not get the Riot internship in the past, maybe applied numerous times and maybe some suggestions or tips for them when applying for this next year. So if they did already 
go into an internship last year, what would you suggest for their next application? And if they did not, what would you suggest even though they applied numerous times? Okay, thank you so much, Justin, for justice for the um, for the clarification um, between the two pieces of that question. So, the general advice that I would give for both of those situations is that in an application, being able to specify what this past year has done for your personal and professional development. So, obviously, if you were, you know, part of the right internship program, obviously you had lots of opportunities and maybe worked on some of those projects that Matt had referred to earlier. So, being able to talk about your skills you brought to the table, what did skills did you level up? What was your impact on the team? What were your biggest learnings? What didn't go well? And what did you learn from that experience? And so that's if you had maybe a previous internship experience, maybe at Riot or somewhere else. And then of course, if you didn't get accepted into an internship program, whether that's Riot or somewhere else, especially for folks that are earlier in their career, folks that are in school, a year is an incredible amount of time for growth. The delta between what someone looked like and were able to do a year ago to now, because I have seen some repeat folks. Um, I've only been again at Riot for two internship um, application cycles, but I have been able to see some repeats and the people that do stand out are the people that are able to speak to the things that they had honed their skills, continue to improve themselves and demonstrated through projects, through experiences, things that they had done with themselves or with other folks to up-level themselves. If I'm seeing the exact same application from last year, maybe copy-pasted resume, copy-pasted responses, that's absolutely fine, but that doesn't demonstrate a growth mindset that we're looking for, not only in interns, but in full-time folks as well. Awesome, I think that's perfect. Uh, a lot of the students have applied to internships with the deadline of like October 31st or before Halloween. Is that the same release date for the students that are applying now for January 6th deadline to know when they're going to get that internship or will everyone know after January 6th? Everyone will know after January 6th. So everyone will receive some kind of email update. So no one's getting ghosted. Everyone will know what the status of their application looks like. Um, the volume and interest of applications that we have received and the interest in the program has grown exponentially over the last several years, but folks should know with an update um, after the January 6th deadline and update about their application status. Thank you, Justice. Works. Awesome. No, the question came in so many times. I'm like, I have to ask. Like, everyone obviously is applying. Like, they're like, Halloween, I'm ready. It's it's already then. It's already submitted. So that sounds great. Um, is it possible to get an internship with an associate's degree? Yes. So as yes, sorry. Um, there's very short answer is yes. Um, so again, we are open to folks that are, again, currently enrolled in any kind of degree program. So again, that is associate programs, bachelor degree programs, graduate degree programs, um, talking about like art certificate um, programs and other kinds of um, online programs through accredited institutions or schools. Um, so yes, an associate's program is absolutely eligible um, to apply for an internship at Riot, as long as, again, folks are currently enrolled in those classes. If you are a recent grad, have already finished your program, I would highly encourage you to check out the full-time careers page, um, looking out for things that have words like entry-level, early grad, associate-level um, roles. Um, to be candid, those kinds of roles for entry level folks don't appear as often, um, but I would encourage you to keep it bookmarked, to continue to be tuned in to things like the LinkedIn page, to connect with me or Victoria online. I know that I personally circulate a lot of those opportunities when I see them. So just being um, in the know um, is the best, is one of the best ways. Awesome. Uh, something a little bit more particular to um, a certain area within the pipeline of Riot, but like our creatives, so like our UI UX designers, some of our visual arts designers, uh, of course, they're going to be submitting portfolios and cover letters, resumes, but in the application and the interview process, is there anything where they would eventually have to whiteboard or do like a test mm -hmm. of what it is that they have as far as the creative or, or those type of careers pathways? 
That's a really good question. So in terms of like uh, an opportunity to demonstrate skills, so I'll say for example, our software engineering roles, which we have closed for summer 2023, unfortunately, but will open again, again, September 1st next year. Look at it in your calendar, please. Um, for our software engineering roles, there is a take home um, test that is given out to all of the folks that apply to that role. And if folks proceed forward in the internship interview process, they, during that initial kind of like 60 minute craft interview that they have with a rioter, usually it is a conversation about the completion of that take home exam. So it's not like a live whiteboarding, please code in front of me kind of situation. It's that you have completed a take home exam and then are walking through your interview or kind of what you did, how you approach the problem, what have you. Um, but we're of course talking about UX design. That's what the specific question was about. For UX design, it's something similar. So it's not saying that you have to complete some sort of test. Again, talking about the preparation of a portfolio, being able to demonstrate your brainstorm iterative process, um, and then being able to do pretty much a portfolio review with your craft interviewer should you proceed forward in the interview process. So it's not that you will be live tested upon your knowledge of tools or particular um, functions. It's more of a, a walkthrough on in a review of that portfolio that you've already completed. Awesome. So this question actually has came in numerous times. Um, in the Riot application process, you ask us to choose our preferred teams. Is that something that is honed in on? Or if we choose a team and we don't get placed with that or have other options, what would you suggest? That's a great question. You are right. So there are specific job postings that are associated with particular teams. Um, I'll address the location difference as maybe one of being one of the most distinctive ones. So for example, I think right now there are two UX design um, recs that are open on the UP website. So one of them is a general bucket that is for all of our LA based roles. And there is another one that says specifically UX design project L. So project L, our R&D project is um, headquartered outside of the Riot Bay Area campus. And so anyone that would be applying for that UX design project L rec would work with a team that is headquartered out of that office. And ultimately, if there was a successful, you know, completion of the internship, if the hiring manager wanted to extend a full time offer for conversion after that student finished school, it would be an opportunity that would be out of the San Francisco Bay Area office as opposed to the Riot LA office. So that is probably one of the differences. That aside, there are other projects that are all centered or headquartered at the LAX office. No one is eliminated based on their choice of product. It is usually an indication for us that we are trying to best line up folks, not only their skill sets, how they can deliver and provide value, line up with the goals of a particular team and what they're trying to do. But then also, if you're interested in that product as well, that is a bonus that is awesome. If you're super familiar, super jazzed on Valorant, you want to become that game designer on Valorant, that's great. But if you also have game design skills that maybe are going to also fit another team within the process, then there is that conversation that can be had with the recruiter early on in the process about where your preferences may lie and how how specific perhaps you are because there are some folks that I've talked with in the past and they're like, I want TFT or you know, hit the road and that's fine too. Some people are very specific about it, but most of the time folks are very broad and open-minded to different kinds of roles and products. We just ask for that indication as an area of interest. Awesome. And even with you talking about the campuses, this was something that was asked. Uh, it Are all internships for 2024 virtual? That is for, tw for summer 2023. So this upcoming summer, Thank they- you. Oh, no, no worries. I'm speeding ahead at this point. Sorry. It's all right. Um, so for summer 2023, yes, we are hosting a virtual internship program for next summer. What that is, is that interns will be re collaborating remotely with their teams over the course of those 12 weeks. But much what Matt had mentioned that we did last summer is that we then invited all of our Riot interns to come out to the Los Angeles headquarters for a week. Last year, we flew them out from all over the world, 
paid for their travel, found a place for them to stay, fed them all for a week, planned a bunch of fun activities for everybody to meet together in person for kind of an end of summer celebration of the internship program. And that is the model in which we are looking to implement our internship program for next summer. Awesome. So I'm just going to ask two last quick questions. Um, first, is there a cap to how many students that you all are looking to hire? Of course, maybe per role, but just in general, just like how last year was like 120, is there 123? Is there a cap this year for the summer of 2023's internship program? That's a good question. So what's really special about the internship program is that Ryama very much believes in having interns on live projects that meet the live business name of Riot Games. And so what that means is, is that the kinds of roles and the kinds of teams that are available from year to year can change depending on what the needs of the business are for the current summer. And so for next year, I can speak broadly on the whole, yes, we are looking for a similar class size of, you know, over 100 internship roles that we're looking to hire. The kinds of roles in which products they are working on may look different, though, from year to year. Sometimes there is always a consistent need for a certain kind of role or on a particular kind of product. But as many people on this call probably know, the company looks very different than it did five or six years ago when it was right game. There was one game and now there's many games. And so the needs of the business will change from year to year. So again, um, if there isn't something that is particularly in alignment with your own interests, your own craft that you see, for example, currently on the university programs website, and you are going to still be an enrolled student come, you know, summer 2024. I would encourage you again, September 1st, calendar reminder to check the university programs um, website openings for all of the different roles and the different products and teams that are asking for interns for summer 2024 as well. Awesome. Okay, so last but not least, and this is the last question of the year. So make it good and make it juicy. Um, for those students that do get an internship for 2023 this summer, um, what would you suggest for them to do to stand out to actually be uh, considered for a full-time position or continuing on their career goals with Riot Games? That is a great question. So I'll preface this by saying, I myself am not necessarily a hiring manager of interns, but I do work with a large majority of the hiring managers that have interns throughout the summer. Um, while it can be different, of course, from position to position, team to team, craft to craft about exactly what the skill sets and things that they are looking for in an entry level um, role, having those conversations with your manager, with your team about the expectations over the course of 12 weeks, because of course, 12 weeks is, you know, three months, that's a chunk of time, but it's not very long. So being able to understand where you are kind of within those competencies, within that expertise of craft, and what they are looking for in an entry level person that they would look to hire onto their team full time. Um, many of the folks, again, are very invested in their interns and there is a priority and an interest in being able to convert um, interns into full time hires, um, being able to facilitate that process and being able to make sure that they come up to a level of skill and craft expertise that can make them a successful full-time employee at Riot or really anywhere else that they may look to work. Um, and again, across a variety of disciplines. So having that active conversation with your hiring manager, with your team members, and focusing on the development of your craft is probably the strongest piece of advice that I could give. Awesome. Yeah. My mom always said, closed mouths don't get fed. And my dad said that the worst anyone can ever tell you is no. So why don't you just ask? So I, I say that is the perfect kind of closing statement to that to say, hey, just put it out there. Make sure that the people know about it and make sure if you do want to continue something that is more for a longevity basis, make sure that that is known to your team and to the hiring managers that are around you. So I would like to give it to Victoria and Sam for any closing remarks uh, for our last fireside chat of 2022. Uh, this has been an amazing series, but I wanted to give it to you guys first and then we can kind of close it out for the year. 
I just want to give a huge shout out to you all and to community. Thank you for showing up to these every single week and being so engaged, reaching out to us on LinkedIn, connecting with us, asking us incredibly insightful questions. Um, it's been really a joy to be able to connect with each and every one of you. And I know from the riot side that our rioters have loved to connect with you as well. Um, so stay tuned. And the new year, Justice and I are connecting to see how we can continue and keep these going in 2023. Plus one to that, Victoria. Thank you so much, everyone, for the folks that have been with this particular fireside chat series. In the beginning, community justice, um, everyone on the community team has been wonderful collaborators for this series. We look forward to partnering with them in the future for other programs just like this. Um, I also saw, yes, I want to validate that I have received LinkedIn messages and requests from lots of folks that are here within this space. Um, I'm doing my best to kind of manage those and go through them in a timely manner. So if you haven't received a response, it's not because I'm ignoring you or I haven't seen it. It's just being able to follow up um, and catch up with those requests from this event as well as others that we've been engaging in as of late. So I have seen you and I do see you now. <laughs> no, exactly the same. I plus one what Sam just said. I have also received the same LinkedIn request um, all the way down to I responded back to one. And next thing you know, he was vending at one of our events the next weekend. So it, it, this is an amazing network of people. And that's exactly why we wanted to do this with Riot Games, because we know that not only do students need this information in the network, but also we need it too. We need to hear from students how we can be better uh, from us as the community side, but also from Riot Games. How can we make this uh, a better playing field for everyone that is applying and wanting to get into the gaming industry? The gaming industry is a $174 billion industry. We all can have a piece of the pie. Uh, Pie, Thanksgiving. Yes, we're getting there. I know. So I wanted to say thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone that has been joining on, even if you just came for the first time today. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for being on uh, the entire time. But also thank you for putting yourself out there. Um, for those that came off camera, for those that have asked questions, for those that presented, like this might have been out of your comfort zone. So we really appreciate you for just doing this and, and being a part of this process with us. This was our first time doing the Riot Fireside chats the way that we did. And I'm so glad that it was a huge success. And I'm saying this based off of the participants and the questions and just the feedback that we've gotten even from LinkedIn. So thank you all so much for being a part of this process. And we cannot wait to do way more and way better next year. Um, I know that a couple people were asking, let me, uh, if you all would get these recordings. Yes. So what we're going to do is we're going to send you after the holiday break, we want you to go ahead and relax. We'll send you all of the recordings so that you can be able to go from the very first time that we talked all the way down to today. Um, and please forward it to your friends, your family. I have had people like, I'm a graduate of Clark Atlanta University uh, years at this point, 2017 grad, and my friends were joining on to these fireside chats because they're like, this is still helping me within the industries that I am going into, even though it's not even a gaming industry. Some people were in entertainment, some people were in health, and some people were in education. And they're like, just the tips that we're getting are fundamental tips. So I want to make sure everyone has that access and please share it out. This isn't IP that no one can know. This is something that everyone can have a piece of the pie too. So want to make sure that we're continuing to grow this network of people and also this community, this gaming community that we have. Um, so thank you, thank you, thank you to our Riot team. Thank you so much to our community team. Um, thank you, Luis, for holding this down with me. Thank you, Denise, for holding this down with me as well from the community team. Um, everybody has been awesome. So thank you again from Community and Riot Games. And we cannot wait to see you uh, in 2023. So we will see you next year. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.